All right, Criola. Mm -hmm. Criola. Where did you grow up? Where are you from originally? Uh, Long Beach, California. Long Beach. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your family growing up. Um, you had mom and dad? Yeah. Uh, my, my mother died. She was a dope fiend. And um, she died when I was 13. I mean, when I was 10, 11. And uh, my dad died uh, three years after her. Uh, we went into foster care. And um, that's where the child started at, in foster care. Um, Where'd your mom lose you? Oh, she was because she was on heroin, and she uh, went to sleep one day and started the uh, mattress on fire. So the Children's Social Services came and picked us up and took us to a foster home. You were old again? <sighs> Eleven. Eleven. Mm -hmm. was How was the foster system for you? Um, the first one we went to. Um, the lady was mean. She was mean, and she used to um, she used to put a lock on her refrigerator, and uh, put a lock on the cabinets. And she would wait. She would cook dinner and for her. She had a son, and she um, she would cook dinner, and um, we would have to wait until they. Me and my my two brothers would have to wait till till they finished eating dinner before we could eat. So if it wasn't nothing left for dinner after dinner, then we didn't eat. Um, we couldn't go in the refrigerator and get no water or nothing. Um, then uh, when I was 13, then my mom died. <clears throat> After we got to, um, when I turned 13, my dad got custody of me. But the, before I left um, the foster, foster house is because my foster brother was molesting me. Um, he would come in here after everybody went sleeping, he would come and get me and take me into his room. And, um, How old was he? See, I was 13, he was 15. I was 15. And, um, Pretty chaotic childhood. Yeah. So um, I had called my dad. That was, well, I called my dad, my stepdad, and I asked him to come and get me. He wanted, why do you want me to come get you? I said, because um, my foster brother told me don't tell nobody or he was going to kill me. So, and he said, so the boy's been doing molesting me? And I was like, yeah. So he went, he came down there, and he went and told the children's social services that the boy was doing something to me. So, um, so they had came and got me. And they, they had put me in um, my auntie's custody, my auntie Sheila. And um, I didn't want to stay there. So I got on the bus <clears throat> and I rode down, I rode the bus all the way to Los Angeles. And I came down to Los Angeles. And um, I didn't know nothing about this place. I didn't even know what scandalous meant. Why did you come to L.A.? Did somebody tell you? Yeah, about L.A. Everybody always talking about Los Angeles, Los Angeles. I didn't know I was going to come to Skid Row, though. I never heard about no Skid Row. So when I came down here, and I I got off the bus, and I seen those big rats. It scared the shit out of me. <laughs> but, um, I got with this girl, um, Twisty or something. It was so long ago. And... Um, she asked me, did I want to go with her? And I was like, yeah, I didn't know she was she was bisexual. And she asked me, did I want to go with her? And she ended up getting me a room. And I got a room, and she introduced me to a couple of people, and that's where I went from there. So, um... You see... I was out hoeing. You, you were working as a prostitute at what age? 13, yeah. And um, I, I was not, I wasn't really into that. So I called my Auntie Sheila again. I went back home. And I stayed, I stayed home with my Auntie Sheila until I was uh, 17. I was 17. And then I went with some friends. I went over with some friends' house and um, I ended up getting pregnant by their brother. And 
From there, I started having babies, 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 babies. And they end up going in the system. And my family got them out the system. My grandmother and my auntie, they got them out the system. When I had, ended up having seven children. And um, after that, I came back down here to Skid Row. And after you had seven kids, at what age? Uh, I started, I was almost 18, I was 17. I was, yeah, at, at 17, almost 18. So you had seven kids by what age? Uh, 28. Hmm. 28. Mm -hmm. And then um, my family raised my kids, and I stayed in the streets. Uh, why, why was birth control not an option or not a thing you went to? Oh, I, I, didn't, I, just, I didn't agree with birth, birth control for some reason. I just didn't agree, I guess, because my family, they never, like, uh, got rid of their kids or, you know, I don't know. Well, actually, I wanted to have 10 kids, so. But, you were on your way. Yeah. <laughs> and, um. When I came down here, I was 28. Oh, I met this guy <laughs> named Scotty. Um, he was a dope dealer. And, um, I ended up moving in with him. We had been friends for like 13 years. Drugs had been a part of your life at this point? Yeah. When did that start? Uh, drugs started on when I was twenty-three. I was twenty-three when the drugs started. Uh, but when I got with him, and then he started, he was, he was. Um, I was twenty-eight, and he was, he was giving, he was more or less giving them to me because he sold them, so I had access to them. And he never knew. He never knew I had. I got them because he had so much of them. And um, then I started selling it. I started selling it for him. And um, then I stopped using. I stopped using for like um, 15 years. And then uh, I got married. What drug was that? Huh? What drug were you using? Cocaine. Cocaine. Mm -hmm. Crack or cocaine? Crack. Crack. Mm -hmm. Um, when I got 48, uh, he, I got married to him. I got married to him, and um, well, I used to pay for everything. I used to work for him. I used to sell food. Um, I had another job, taking care of his uncle, and um, I got married to him at 48. And uh, after we got married, he was he was into the fast life. It was like he was have, living two, a double life. And when I found out about him, so I divorced him. And um, I started back using again. And um, after that, I got with this guy. And we came, we came down here, and we came down, down, down Skid Row, and we started back using, well, I started back using, and um, he was using too. So we got, like, tired of using, so we was like, okay, we're going to just get away from here and just go take a trip or something. We ended up going to Las Vegas. I was to Las Vegas, and I, I started hoeing out there. Um, that was crazy. People was trying to hold me in hostage, and um, it was crazy. Um, so is, that is didn't prosti is pro Was prostitution just a, a last resort? Yeah. It's just a hustle. Yeah. That any any female can do. Yeah. Any guy can do too. <laughs> Down here, the yeah. guys do it too. Yeah. So shoot, we left Vegas. I, I, we left Vegas and. Um, I came back down here. I went and got clean. He stayed down here. Um, I kept coming to check on him, check on him, check on him until I one day I took one again. I took one again and um, 
and I met this guy named Z. You cold piece of work. Um, I was in a relationship with him for like two years. In the beginning, it was really good. It was good. It was really good. I think that's when I fell in love with him. But then after after in a year and a half, um, he started getting in, into this this world of I don't know. I, it was just um, uh, I had found out after after the fact he was in the swinging parties and um, well, I went I went to to um, to a program and he had girl women all in his house and having all these parties and orgies and. <laughs> So before I could get out the program, they came and told me that he was dead. And um, that fucked me up because I, um, I was going to the program to get myself together so we, our relationship could be better. But I ended up coming back down here and um, he, um, they said he was dead, but then everybody was like, okay, so he died this day, he died April, and I talked to him in May 16th, and then they said that he, they laid him to rest on June the 18th. They wouldn't let me go to the funeral, they wouldn't tell me where it was at. So then for some reason, I just couldn't fathom him being dead. Come to find out, he's not. All in downtown Skid Row. <laughs> Why do you think he was trying to make you think he was dead? I don't know. He had caught, caught up in something down here This, it ain't good. I know that. I really can't tell you 100%. I'm not 100% sure. I really don't know why he did it. But then he, he has a whole different life. And his homeboys and stuff come and tell me about him. They don't even realize that... that um, that they don't realize that he's he's supposed to be dead. So they come, you know, talking about you, him. You had married him? No, I didn't marry him. So he was just yeah, trying to get out or get away? I guess. Uh, all you had to do was be a man. But Skid Row's fairly small. I mean, everyone yeah. knows everybody down here. Yeah, yeah. It's but I, I think secret. what he did is he switched locations, and um, he only comes out at a certain time of the day or early morning. Um I guess <laughs> I've seen a couple of men running from me, so, and I'm like, dang, that looked just like him. Hmm. And I'm looking, well, I'm looking at him, he's looking at me. So if I start walking towards that way, he walks the other way. Like, okay. I don't know, I still can't, I still don't believe that he's dead. I see his friends, his friends, like, oh, I said, when the last time you seen him? He's, oh, I seen him another day. So you still haven't seen him? I haven't seen him. <laughs> no, I haven't seen him. But, um, he had me walking around here like a zombie. So There's yeah. easier ways to break up with a female. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> Man. But it's like deja vu. These some men is in this in this entity and they is all mixed up in it and it's just um <sighs> these weird things be happening. You you think it's you think there's evil down here? Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. There's a lot of evil down here. This place is, ooh-wee. I done seen some shit I ain't never seen in my life. I only heard, read about it or somebody preached about it or something. There's so much evil down here. They have so much sorcery. It's so much sorcery. Just All you got to do is like that pipe. All you got to do is like that pookie. <laughs> like that joint or like something. Like the Sherm stick, motherfuckers flying off the building. It's, it's, I don't know, it's just all the drugs are just mixed up with this entity. It's all mixed in together. And it's just stuff that just goes on like every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. You, you've been down here for how long on this last stint? Um, well, since, since I found out that he was dead, um, I've been down here since... See, I had got out that place in May, May, yeah, since May of last year. Hmm. But you've you've been on the streets for for most of your life. Mm, yeah, somewhat, yeah. Yep. So 
I'm trying to get housing, but um, it's, it's just, I don't know. It seems like I'm just the last one in the, end of the line. How many kids do you have now? Seven. Seven? Mm-hmm. Yep. So, do you see them at all? Yeah, I see them, and I'm, I'm going to see them on my birthday on the 28th. You know, I'm how's, gonna, how's Mother's Day going to be for you next week? That's, uh, I, I think it's be, it'll be pretty good. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to leave here, and I'm going to go with my God, sister. I, I can't do this no more. This is wearing me down. This downtown skid row is is a cold piece of work. But, but Mother's Day for a woman in your situation is a sore spot? Is it something you avoid and don't think mm-hmm. about, or is it something you celebrate? Well, I didn't used to think about it, but um, I found my son. My son was working down here. He's an armed guard. So he kind of like, he wanted like brought my family back together. So, but I haven't seen the rest of my kids yet. I haven't seen them. But that's what's supposed to happen on my birthday. So I think it'll be a good Mother's Day this year. Yeah. My son, he been, he been looking out for me. He come down here, he feed me, bring me food, him and his girlfriend. She's really sweet, she's a sweet lady. And um, he makes sure I'm all right. It's really amazing the amount of forgiveness people have for parents who didn't exactly hold up their end of the of their responsibilities. Yeah, shit happens sometimes. When is your birthday? Twenty eighth, May twenty eighth. You think you'll be down here the rest of your life? No. 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 What's what's going to change? I'm tired. And next week, I, my people are supposed to send for me. So I don't think I'll be down here for the rest of my life. I don't. I don't think I would even live. I don't think I'd survive down here. I mean. But you're in a tent now. Yeah. And how are you working? How are you making money? Um, I, I work on the streets. I work. I've out there making money on the streets. Um, D- dating guys? Yeah. 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 It's not something I want to do. I don't. I don't want to do this. Yeah. It's shit you have to put up and what you have to go through and deal with. And how, how do you think living this life? has changed you over the years? Mm. Well, it, it, I, I think it has changed me for the better because I see how people, how evil people are and how they don't care about people and, and how they do bad stuff to each other. I don't want to be like that because I wasn't, I, I don't know, I, I wasn't raised like that. I, I don't be mean, I don't be evil to people. That's just not in my, it ain't in my heart. But they try to make me vindictive and evil like them, but I don't want that. What's your biggest regret? Even my kids. What do you point the finger at? Do you blame the drugs? Do you blame what happened to you as a young girl? Do you blame your dad? Do you blame? I don't know. I can't blame nobody for myself. I have choices. I just made the wrong choice. Hmm. Carilla, what would you say is the most important lesson you've learned in your life? Most important lesson. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I guess you have to know better to do better. All right, Creola, thank you so much for sharing your story. Okay.
I wish you lots of luck. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Have a nice birthday and Mother's Day. Thank you. All right, thank you.